1. Concept and Development During World War I, the concept of infantry guns, or infantry support guns, had finally established itself in the German army. These light guns were integrated into the infantry and were intended to directly support the soldiers during their advance. In the Reichswehr, in the early 1930s, the light mortars, Leichterminnenwerfer 7.58 cm, used in the war were replaced by the 7.5 cm light infantry gun 18. At the same time, the heavy 15 cm heavy infantry gun 33 was also introduced. Compared to the Linstagram to IG-18, its effect was naturally much stronger, but it also weighed almost three times as much at 1,700 kilograms. Therefore, early on, there was consideration for the further development of this effective weapon into a self-propelled howitzer. In parallel, the concept of the assault gun based on the Panzer III, Stug III, was also being advanced. After the Polish campaign, the first surplus Panzer I Ausfrung B chassis became available in 1940s. The Berlin-based company Ultimar Kiesch Kettenwerk GmbH, or Alkit for short, received the order to develop a self-propelled howitzer for two guns based on the Panzer I. This involved on the one hand a 47 mm PUVVZ-36, an anti-tank gun by Skoda, which was adopted as the 4.7 cm Pac-36 TOTOD, and on the 15 cm heavy Instagram 33, a total of 132 Panzer I with the 4.7 cm Pac T and 15 cm SIG were built on Panzerkampfwagen Ausfrung B. The roof of the Panzer was reinforced and modified to accommodate the complete SIG along with its wheels. In addition, a simple three-sided protective shield made of 10 mm armored steel was added. This construction was not very elegant, but it served its purpose. With these vehicles, six independent heavy infantry gun companies, Mod S, designated 700 and 1 to 706, were equipped, and one company was assigned to each of the 1st, 2nd, 5th, 7th, 9th, and the Panzer divisions. The vehicles proved themselves very well in the Western campaign despite obvious deficiencies, overloading of the chassis and drive, high superstructure, weak armor protection, no close defense weapon. However, during the attack on the Soviet Union, the vehicles, now also referred to as Sturm Panzer I, reached their limits. Nevertheless, the concept had proven itself and the utility of a heavy infantry gun on a protected self-propelled howitzer was now undisputed. Although the Sturm Gestes had also proven itself very well, its 7.5 cm gun did not have the desired effect on the target as a nearly 40 kg heavy 15 cm high explosive shell could achieve. The development and production of a Stug 3 variant with a 10.5 cm howitzer known as Sturmhobitz III, did not begin until February 1943. At a command conference on September 20, 1942, an urgent demand from the troops was presented. Based on their combat experiences in Stalingrad, they requested a heavily armored vehicle with a gun capable of destroying a house with just a few shots. Furthermore, such a previously non-existent vehicle was to be made available to the troops within just 14 days. The response came again from Alcott. In record time, a small series of 24 so-called Sturm Infanterie Gestzi 33 was built based on damaged Sturm Gestzi. Twelve examples of the vehicle armed with an SA arrived in Stalingrad at the end of October, where they were lost along with the entire army. One example was captured and is now located in Kubinka. Twelve more vehicles were used up on the Eastern Front. 2. Production and Introduction 2.1 Series and a Variant However, the concept of a closed armored superstructure with a heavy infantry gun had proven to be an important support for the attack against fortified positions. 
In October 1942, Alcott presented designs for a follow-up vehicle based on the Panzer IV and received the order to prepare the production of 40 to 60 vehicles as quickly as possible. At the same time, Skoda was commissioned to develop a new gun that could fire the ammunition of the Essig. 33. This gun was to be the armament for the new vehicles. In February, the first models were presented, prompting Hitler himself to demand the provision of the first 40 vehicles by May 1943. Production of the guns began in March at Skoda, while the Panzer Force came from the Nibelungenwerk. By May 1943, 60 vehicles were produced, and the first unit, the Sturmpanzer Abteilung, was formed. According to the War Strength Report, its three companies were organized and equipped with Sturmpanzer's Stupa company commanders' platoons each. In the meantime, Hitler made two important decisions regarding the new tank. In April 1943, it was decided that the vehicles should belong to the armored forces and not to the artillery, as was the case with the Sturmgeschtsee. In May 1943, it was decided that the official designation of the vehicle should be Sturmpanzer. Overall, the Sturmpanzer IV can be divided into three variants or subgroups, depending on the time of production. 1. As mentioned before, a total of 60 Sturmpanzers were built between April and May 1943. The first eight were built on damaged Panzer IV, Eosef, E and F chassis, while the rest, 52, were built on Eosef, G. The gun sight, SLF's phonia, was integrated into the loader's hatch. There was no hull machine gun yet, but an MG-34 could be mounted in the open hatch of the loader. Similar to the Stug 3 from the G version onwards, there were two closed shooting ports on each side of the superstructure, sealed with plugs for pistols or submachine guns. The Sturmhaubitz 43 caliber 15 cm L12, developed by Skoda, was mounted in a ball mount in the 100 megameters thick frontal armor plate. The Driver had a small extension with the driver's vision port 80, as also used in the Tiger. After the first 60 vehicles, production was halted until December 1943, and then continued at varying intensity until the end of the war. 2. The vehicles that went into production from December 1943 differed from the first 60 vehicles in several points. They were based on the Panzer for IVSF. H from ongoing production, the loader's hatch was removed, and the SLF's phonia was now guided through a small opening in the roof. The driver's extension was changed, and the driver's vision port 80 was completely removed. Instead, an angled mirror was used. The armor around the gun mantlet was extended. 3. From June 1944 onwards, the last and largest batch of Sturmpanzers, a total of 163, were based on the Panzer Vorte. J. The superstructure was completely redesigned, from hexagonal to rectangular. A small extension with an MG ball mount was added above the driver's position. The commander now had a hatch with the commander's cupola from the Stug 3 AOSF. G. Which provided better visibility through the angled mirrors due to the initially poor ventilation of the fighting compartment two additional ventilation hatches were added the vehicles were also equipped with rubber saving steel road wheels and the exhaust system received two vertical flame dampers the last models could be recognized by the factory applied zimmert coating 2.2 units and operations the sturmpanzer iv had its baptism of fire during operation citadel with the sturmpanzer abteilung the unit fought in the northern sector and was combined with the two heavy tank destroyer battalions 653 and 654 Panzergeferdnand to form the heavy tank destroyer regiment 656. After Kursk, the battalion continued to fight on the eastern front. In December, it was relocated to Austria together with the SPZJG, while the Ferdinand tanks were converted into elephants. 
the remaining stupas of the battalion were repaired and brought up to the technical standard of the newly manufactured Sturmpanzers. From February 1944, the battalion saw heavy action as part of Panzer Regiment in Italy. In April 1945, all remaining 42 Sturmpanzers had to be destroyed during the retreat towards Lake Garda. There were three other Sturmpanzer battalions, Stupa, and which fought on the eastern and western fronts, from Normandy through Warsaw, East were converted to Stug 3 in 1945 or disbanded to fill other units with personnel. Overall, the 302 Sturmpanzer Vs built performed their very specific task well and were a significant help in the attack for the infantry they supported. However, their weight was also their biggest drawback, as the Panzer IV chassis was overloaded from the start, severely limiting the vehicle's reliability. In addition, they faced the same problems as other units with heavy tanks like the Tiger, Ferdinand Elephant. One advantage was their partial compatibility with the Panzer IV. However, since the Stupas often operated together with Tigers, Ferdinand Elephants, or Panther units, this logistical advantage could rarely be utilized. It remains questionable what sense a well-armored and heavy but sluggish assault vehicle had for an army that had to retreat further and further on all fronts in the second half of the war. The fate of the even heavier and more heavily armed successor in the form of the Sturmtiger illustrates this more than clearly. The origin of the nickname Brumber cannot be definitively determined anymore, but it is likely to have come from Western Allied soldiers. The Stupa IV was not a tank destroyer, although this impression is created nowadays by well-known tank action games and is held by some people. While the Sturmpanzer IV could fire the 15 cm infantry shell HLA, a powerful armor-piercing hollow-charge shell designed for use against armored targets such as tank turrets and reinforced concrete bunkers, its use against other armored vehicles was only intended as a last resort. As the gun's traverse was limited, and the necessary aiming devices were lacking, the rate of fire of 2-3 rounds per minute was also not ideal for this purpose. Nevertheless, few tanks of the war would have survived a hit from the Brumber. Few tanks of the war would have survived a hit from the Brumbeer.